Hello, I'm Crafty Patty. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we're going to be making bags from macrame cord. They turn out beautifully. I'm really loving how they look so nice and organic. They look like I've bought them from the store, but no, you can make them. And the beauty of this, you can make them in any size you want. Make them larger for a shopping tote bag. Make them smaller for a little tiny day purse for a quick little trip to the store. So keep watching and let's get to it. And the supplies that you'll be needing. Obviously a tape measure comes in handy for measuring. I did find that when I was putting on my little loop for my bag that this hard metal ruler works really well for measuring. And this is a sewing and knitting gauge. I did use the Alex Anderson. This is a 4-in-1 tool. And of course I used the stiletto and that helps to hold the rope in place when you're sewing. This also comes in handy. This is a air erasable or washable fabric pen. So when you're wanting to sew and make your guidelines, this is really useful. You'll want one beater button for the top of your bag to enclose the top of your bag. And I like to sew this on with a very, very strong 100% DMC crochet cotton and it's mercerized, which means it is really strong. And of course, sewing thread to match your macrame cord and lots of wound up bobbins. You'll be using some pins and you'll also need a needle for sewing on your button with a large enough eye that you can thread on your thread. I have used one magic clip in this video, so just in case you want to know where to get that, I will leave a link in the description box below for you. I'll be using a four millimeter braided macrame cord today. Notice how it is braided. It is not twisted. Twisted cord is not easy to sew with when you're making a bag like this. So do make sure it is braided. And again, I will leave a link for you in the description box. I'm going to make my first bend at about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. So it doesn't have to be exact. It depends on the size of bag that you want as well. If you want a bigger bag, then go to four or even go to four and a half or five. But I want a smaller bag today. So I'm going to bend it right there. And I'm just going to hold this bend together with a magic clip just because I find those hold it together and keep it together nicely. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to start here. I'm going to sew down then take it out again and then start here and sew down just to get a good foundation of this first part. And then we will start to do our circle around. I'm using my manual Husqvarna today. We're going to start out with our zigzag and I've got as far as I can go for my width, which is 5.5 and I have my length set at one. And I just wanted to mention a little bit about the zigzag length. This one I set at one, which is a really, really close zigzag. The closer the zigzag, the stiffer your bag will be because it'll give it more support. And on this bag, I chose to make the zigzag at about two. And this creates a longer stitch, but it will also create a softer bag. So it won't be as firm. So depending on what you like. So again, I'm just going to fold these together, starting approximately in the middle or a little bit further up. And then I will make sure that my needle falls into my right cord here. Then when I know it's sitting into the cord, that will hold this cord in place. I can come in with a stiletto or a pointed tool whatever you have, a pair of scissors, and then you can just push this one in and then drop your presser foot so it holds it in place. So those are nice and tight. And we're going to sew these 
two together down to the end here. And I will backstitch this to set it and away we go. I'm going to take this out and I will sew up the other side. Our cord will be coming off the left for this point in time. It will always be that way, but just to get this good foundation here, we can take off our magic clip and let's sew up the rest of that first section here. The reason I'm doing that is because when you try to start sewing right up at the top here at your sewing machine, the teeth, you've only got half of the teeth here to grab and it sometimes will not grab. So that's why we're doing it this way, just for the start. Again, setting my needle into my right side here, using whatever I have to push in the other cord and then drop my presser foot. And let's sew to the end. If you find that it's hard to sew for you and it's not moving, you can always grab the end here and just pull slightly just to help it along. And let's push these together and sew to the end. That's given us a nice foundation to start with. And I like to pop my macrame cord in a basket or bowl and then it is easy to access and it comes up nice and easy for sewing. Now if your end is raveling out, I'm just going to trim some of that off. And now we're ready to continue to sew and start making our rounds. So now we want the cord coming off the right side because our basket is going to form to the left. I'm going to make sure that my needle is sitting in the right position. I'm going into the right here, into this cord here. And I'm just going to sew back a little bit just so I can get ready to make my turn and sew our next row. Just did a back stitch to set that again so we don't lose those threads. And I'm going to get ready to make this bend. So it's going to be nice and tight up in here. So I'm not sewing here yet, but I'm just getting it ready in case my needle gets down a little bit further. So I've already got that nice bend in here. So let's continue sewing down to the end here. Once you get close to that curve, I'm going to lift my presser foot, pivot, pulling this cord so it's nice and tight around those raw ends that we've just cut off. Go a little slow here, just to get our corner. Lifting, turning, and pulling the cord, making sure it's nice and tight on that first little bend. And again, keep pivoting until you've got it going around that corner. And this is when you can use your stiletto or whatever you've got to just push that in. Here's a little trick. If you find that your um, cord is not getting sewn and it's just sitting in the same place, it's because your presser foot is tilted up. This particular machine doesn't know how to handle that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some of my excess cord here. I'm going to slip this underneath the back of my presser foot. So just so it lifts it up and gives it some support to move it along. Don't sew into that, that's just to help it out. So now let's see if we can get that to sew around here. And now it's just enough to get it to grab. That's all it wanted. And again, when I come around the back here, again I'm going to leave that to the back here, just so it helps my presser foot and helps the feed, the feet to grab. 
just like so. And now I can get around my corner here. And again, pressing that in, making sure that's in. And if you don't sew into it, but you can leave it just poked in on an angle just to make sure that you're grabbing that cord here. And away you go. So now you're making sure that you're sewing these two together here. So your first few rounds are the most difficult. Once you get going there and you've got enough bulk underneath your presser foot and for your feet to grab, you'll be ready to go. Again, pulling this around, just getting it ready. We're now sewing this to this and keep going. Again, needle to the right, pivot. Needle to the right and pivot. And any time it feels like it's not moving, you can always put your excess in the back to lift up the back of that presser foot and it will help it along. And once you get more comfortable with it, you can go faster and use your fingers to guide it around rather than lifting to pivot. Just make sure you're sewing into both of your ropes. I'm just bringing it with my fingers and bringing it around. Okay, so you got the idea. So just keep going around and around until you've got the base size that you want. What I'm doing now is I'm using my finger here to guide the rope. I'm using these fingers to pull it around. I want my size to come straight up right away. So I'm going to now lift this all the way up to the side of my sewing machine head and start sewing around again. Constantly keeping it flat the whole time. And you can see how it's starting to already bend in. Continue around and keep going until you've got the height that you want for your bag. Some people have commented on my channel to say, well, I can't get my sides to go straight up. What am I doing wrong? If you're not holding it all the way up, then you're not going to get your flat side. And you can also try to make sure that you're really kind of pulling up a little bit too, like not letting it slack off, but making sure it's quite tight when you're pulling up. So around you go. Okay, I've just taken it off the sewing machine because I had to replace my bobbin with more thread. And once you can see that your sides are going straight up, which is what you want it to do, they will come out a little bit on the side because that's just how it's going to work. And then you don't have to be as accurate with like really holding it up like this. But as long as you're still up against your side of your machine and this is sitting good and flat in here, then you'll be good to go. So let's just pop this back in again. 
And what I'm sewing now, I'm still holding up against the side, but I'm just making sure it's good and flat here. And I should show you this actually, because I chose to make a smaller basket, even though this will go over the head of my machine, it makes it very difficult to sew inside here. I'd have to get my head right in there to see what I was doing. It would be too awkward. So I, I am sewing with this down, but I'm still pushing my hand so the bottom of the basket is sitting against here. And I'm just making sure that this is sitting flat and I will continue to get my um, flat sides that way. The other thing I'm finding while I'm sewing along is just to work the basket forward like this, or your bag, whatever you want to call it, basket or bag and then start sewing and sew this strip here. Making sure your needle is down, work it around again, and then sew the next strip. So I've decided to stop there because I've got only this much core left and I don't want to run out because I've got to have at least four more rows to make my handles. So right now I'm sitting at about six and three quarters inches or about 17 centimeters in height. Now we're ready to make our little handles and our little ring to attach our beads so we can close up the bag. So I'm going to just pull it like this, find my sides and just poke a pin in there so we can have some measurement. So it's one right here. And our other side here. Now I purposely stopped sewing right here because I already pre-measured where I want my little handle to start. So there's going to be a handle here and one on the other side. So we want our handles to be exactly the same on both sides. This one is measuring in at two and a quarter inches. Stop or start my handle exactly the same place on the other side here. Well, it's those two markings. And now we're going to do the same for the other side here. Again, mark in my two and a quarter inches. And the other thing we need to do is make our little ring so we can close up our bag. So just to make it easier for measuring, I'm just going to bring it a little past my red marker on both sides. Then I've got my five inch mark. So I know that two and a half right here is the middle. So just so I don't confuse them with my red markers, I will place a white pin right here and a white pin to the other side and those two pins are three quarters of an inch apart. We can now remove our side pins because we don't need those markings for anything and I'm going to come in with a fabric air erasable pen because I don't want to worry about taking these pins out and I'm just going to come in and mark on the inside of my bag because that's where I'm going to see it when I'm sewing. And I'm just going to mark in here. This will be the very first thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to mark these up top. That tells me this is the first marking. These are going to be my next rows. So I'll just follow along and place my markings inside the bag. I've added a little arrow telling myself that this is where my handle is going to sit, not here. And now we can take those pins out. This is where I put my marking for my handle, but we're not going to do the handles yet. What we want to do is make the little loop first. So let's sew up to where we're going to make our loop. Now 
Now because you'll have a little bit of a stress point here, we want to back stitch and forward a couple times. We've got our needle down, so I'm going to raise the presser foot and I want to measure out one inch and bring it back in again. Using a metal gauge really helps because then you've got something hard for it to bump up against. So there's my one inch coming up and I want it to come back down where my next marking is, which is right here. I'll just pop a pin in here just to hold it. Press your foot back down. And now I'm just gonna sew along till we get to this point here. And just angle it in so you're only sewing onto this last row here. Just go slowly until you get to your marker. Once you get to your marker, so press your foot up, angle your basket, because we want to make sure we catch it, and then watch where your marking is, and then push it in with a sletto or whatever you've got, crochet hook, whatever you've got, till it matches up to the marking there. And then bring down your presser foot. And sew into that little loop. Now once you've caught it, you can even it out again. I'm going to take this pin out and I'm going to go back and forth to make sure it's good and solid. You've now made your loop that will come over your little um, bead over here. This is the marking right here showing my arrow that this is going to be one of the handles. We have to wait to do this handle until we come back around. So we're going to bypass this one and we're going to work on our next handle. So go around till you find the markings for your next handle. Coming up to our marker right here, here's our first marker. This is going to be the start of our one handle, so let's sew up to that. All right, I'm going to back stitch, forward, back stitch, and forward. Now we're not going to do any more with this one here. This is Secure it with our needle down. So decide how big you want your little handles. Probably want it about there. So if that's where you want it, then we're going to make sure that we start sewing this handle at our marking point right here. And I'll just put a pin in again just to hold recording in place. And now we're going to angle it and only sew into this cord here. We're not going to sew into this yet to make our handle. So back and angle it over to the back here. And then once you're into the this last cord and straighten it out. We're going to sew along just this side here. Just going to move my just going to move my pin down a little bit further here. And then here, I'm going to just bend it like so. So I only catch that last bit of the cording. 
So I'm just bending it and then measuring it where my line is. And I'm going to make sure I catch just these two. Just angling the presser foot so I can sew into this cord, come back, drop my presser foot, remove my stiletto, and now I can sew into this cord. And then once I've grabbed it, I can take my pin out, and then I'm going to even it out, even out my cording, sew back up to where my line is, back stitch. So I know it's right on the same spot, there it is there. Forward, back, and forward. Okay, that's how we've done our first start of our first handle. Now we're going to sew along until we find our next markings for our next handle, which is right there. And here's the marking, and I know I've got my the handle coming this way, so I'll sew up to my purple line. Back stitch, forward, back stitch, forward, angle, and then just sew into this part here. And then straight again along to the next marker. Now we want this handle to be exactly the same size as our other handle. And you're going to measure from where you first started sewing, which is right there, hold tight, pull it along as far as you can go. Hold it in place, keep going, there you can see that we're at 11 inches or 28 centimeters. So I know I need to make this exactly 11 inches. So holding tight there, moving it along. there's 11 inches or 28 centimeters. I'm just going to put a pin right there so I don't lose my marking. Just rotate this back around. I just did that so you could see what I was doing. I'm also going to bring my supports back because it helps to have this sitting and being supported rather than dragging down otherwise it'll pull down your basket. All right so we know now that this has to be inserted right at my line, which is right here. So I'm going to just leave it there for now. I'm going to sew up a little bit closer. Now I'm going to angle, push my rope in, take out my pin, and catch that macrame cord. Once I've caught it, even it out, you can bring your rope straight back. And now watching where your marking is, I need to come forward. And back. I'm back, going to go back up to my marker and forward. And now I should have both handles exactly the same size. Now we're going to sew around till we get to our first handle. So 
So we're just almost getting to our first handle here. So now these two we're going to be sewing together. Now you can see you're almost back to the beginning of this one. So you're going to continue and sew along these two. And then once you get to here, you're going to sew this into your bag again because you'll be past your handle. So now you're sewing these together. And now we're sewing into the actual bag. And now we're just about at our next handle. So again, now we're sewing this rope to the handle. making it nice and straight so both of them are together. And now you're sewing the rope to the basket. And here's our handle again, making our third round on our handle. And I was wondering why that wasn't sewing. I ran out of bobbin thread and this does happen sometimes when you just get so enthralled with sewing so I'll have to take that out and just go back to where I ended, backstitch, and we'll do this portion again. And I am on my fourth row of the handle. This will be the last portion for this handle. And here's my other handle. I've got three rows and finishing off with my fourth row. Both handles have now got four rows of cording. And I'm going to finish it off at the end of or the beginning of this first handle. So I'm just going to cut this off for now right here. I'll go a little bit shorter. I'm just going to take a little bit of bulk out of the inside of this. Just so it angles down and I can bring that to a nice ending here. So I'm going to come a little closer here. I'm going to put these little ends up on top of my handle so I can blend it in. And I'll go back and forth and just get those to tuck in. And now I'm going to sew on my bead so I can close up the bag. When I'm sewing anything like that, I like to use something that's really strong. As you can see, just an ordinary sewing thread is quite thin. And this DMC crochet cot that I'm going to be using is a lot thicker. When the eye of the needle is not on the large side, but large enough, the easiest way to thread, and you probably know this, but for those that don't, I wrap it around my needle I pull it down really tight, slip it off, and then have the eye of the needle coming so it will catch that thread and then I pull it through. Just enough so you can see that you can grab it and that's the easiest way to thread it. If you try to get just that end into a smaller hole, chances are you probably won't do it and you'll need a needle threader. I'm going to tie a knot in the end and the other way I've always tied my knots is to twist it around my finger. So I take my thread, I wrap it around so it crosses, I then roll it off my finger, then I take my thumb and my finger and I pull down 
and I've made my knot. And I'll just cut off the excess that I do not need so it doesn't show too much on the inside of my bag. Folding our bag in half so we can get a good measurement of where we're going to place our bead or button, whatever you're using. And then I'm going to fold down my little loop. And then I'm going to come in with my air erasable pen and make a dot right in the middle where I want that to be placed. Now we can come in through the back. I want to make sure that I grab one of the cords because if I come right through the middle of two cords, it won't be as strong. So making sure that I've got it coming right through one of the cords. And now we can place our bead on. I'm going to go right back down through that same hole or very close to the same hole and that will center my bead. We're going to have it so it's facing like so. Now you can just keep coming up through that same marking that you made and just keep going through and around and around until your bead is good and secure. Giving it a good tug and then back through that same hole just to keep it centered. Once you know it's centered then you can work back a little bit further to the edge here, closer to the edge of your bead And coming down, as I say, closer to the edge of the bead here rather than the original first marking. And that will give it more security and it'll keep it more steady there. And just go around a few more times. And then once you've gone through about four or five times, it's nice and secure. This time you're going to come up through the back. We're going to come up where our other thread is and this time we're going to really secure it by wrapping around three times one two three that will really secure and keep it really nice and tight i'm just going to hold on to that for now and bring it back through to the back of the bag nice and tight and now we can finish it off the, on the back here and just by coming through some of our stitches here bringing up the loop through the loop and we'll do that one more time And once you've got a good secure knot there, just going to bring it through and drag it across a little bit further. And then pull that through and then we can cut it off and that little end will be tucked inside where you won't see it. And now you can secure your bag with your little bead. And here's our finished little bag. It's got a nice flat bottom, which I love because when you go to put your bag down, it stays upright. It's soft enough, yet stiff enough because of the tight zigzag and big enough to add the items that I like to go shopping with. So for me, it's just my wallet, a shopping bag, my cell phone, and keys. And that's all I need, and away I go. Isn't that adorable? And I love how it gives a really organic 
texture because when you're sewing with the cord sometimes it will twist a little bit which is perfect because it makes it almost look like a fabric i love it well i hope i've inspired you to make your very own macrame bag as well this is the one i showed you in the video how to make this little cute little bag now it has the shorter handles if you want the longer handles then you're just going to pull out more cord so it fits to be an over shoulder bag so whatever you like you can make them any size you want and if you want to take it up a notch you can always line your bags i found this adorable little fabric at walmart their little fat quarters with the cacti and it had the complimentary fabric here with little cacti on it as well so I'm thinking I just might do a little video on how to line the bag. So put on your notification bell and make sure you don't miss any videos. Until next time, bye-bye.